So questions I get a lot is about wood finishes. Um, the first thing I'll say about wood finishes is most people overcomplicate the process. Okay, it does not need to be overcomplicated. Um, essentially, it, it, in in my view of wood finishes, you basically have film finishes and you have oil finishes. Okay, so film finishes are things that are built up over the surface and are thick films. That includes lacquers, polyurethanes, waterborne polyurethanes, epoxies, shellacs. Those are all film finishes. Then you have oil finishes. The concept of oil finishes is they soak into the pores and protect the wood. Film finishes sit on top of the wood and protect the wood. Um, in the, I'm a huge proponent of oil finishes. Um, when it comes to oil finishes, I'm, I'm a, this is all an oversimplification. When it comes to oil finishes, there's really two groupings of oil finishes. There is evaporating oils and there are polymerizing oils. So evaporating oils are more often things that need to be quick, food safe, and easy. That's pretty much all your cutting board oils. Uh, evaporating oils, as they get hit with UV rays and temperature, they evaporate off the surface of the wood and the wood dries back out. Uh, things like coconut oil, mineral oil, pretty much anything made for cutting boards in today's world is an evaporating oil finish, okay? Um, it doesn't go rancid, it doesn't get gummy, it evaporates off the surface and you could wipe it on now and cook supper with it tomorrow or an hour from now in reality. Then there's polymerizing oil finishes. So polymerizing oil, as the oil dries, it turns to a polymer, it hardens. So if you took a dollop of coconut oil and, a, and let's say you take a polymerizing oil like linseed oil, and you poured them on pieces of sheet metal and you put them out in the hot sun in the middle of the summer. The coconut oil would evaporate and the metal would be clean. The linseed oil would polymerize and turn to a thick goopy gel and eventually a hard crystal. So polymerizing oils soak into the pores of the wood and then they harden. So they create a barrier, not allowing water to penetrate into the wood pores. Now, inside the grouping of polymerizing oils, you have pure oils, and you have blends. So a lot of really popular products are things that use a polymerizing oil and a chemical catalyst, right? So this is a, a polymerizing linseed oil with a chemical catalyst, right? Um, the chemical catalyst essentially um, activates the linseed oil or other polymerizing oils that they have blended in here to dry really, really fast, okay? If you took pure linseed oil and when I say pure linseed oil, I'm talking about oil that you could literally ingest because linseed is actually flax, flaxseed oil. So if you went to the health food store and got flaxseed oil, um, that would be a pure linseed oil. If you wipe that on your wood, it could take up to 30 days to fully polymerize. That means to turn to that hard crystal in the wood. Um, so it's often made into a chemical blend, some sort of catalyst or activator, some sort of dryer. If you buy boiled linseed oil or raw linseed oil from the hardware store in those metal tins, it's full of xylene or toluene or some other sort of harsh chemical um, dryer to try to activate it so that it dries faster, okay? Those are not pure oils. Um, other popular ones may have things like a urethane varnish mixed with them. Um, old school guys would actually take pure urethane varnish, pure linseed oil, and a thinner like uh, pure spirit scum turpentine, and they would mix their own, what they would call an oil varnish, like this product, an oil varnish. Um, and those, the, the, the varnish and the chemical helps the, lins, the polymerizing oil harden faster, and then the varnish is somewhat of a film finish, and you can build up a finish faster. Then you have pure oils, like this oil is a pure tongue oil, okay? There's different brands. I'm a proponent of Walrus Oil. They're an amazing company, check them out. Dave Dar is a fantastic individual, um, just a very good company. There's other companies out there um, that are equally as good of a product. Walrus Oil, their values as a company are out of this world. I'm just gonna say that. So a pure oil takes a long time to dry. And so like a pure tongue oil could take up to three to four weeks to fully cure. So what does that look like when you're doing a finish? Coats after coats after coats over weeks to fully build up that polymerization, to build it up to the surface to full barrier protection. Um, in my opinion, pure oil route over time built up layers is best when it comes to oil finishes. Uh, polymerizing oils that have chemical dryers in them do also 
a similar job in a much faster fashion. Um, personally, I've seen over time a pure tongue oil or linseed oil finish that's built up properly will outlast things with chemical dryers. Um, essentially, if you think of pores in the wood being like straws and you fill them up with a pure oil that dries and continues to fill the straw and dry and dry and dry, you have a deeper saturation point of, of polymer built up in the pores versus something that's a single coat that dries right away and then underneath that coat the war the the wood is still um poroscopic and can receive moisture um, so those are just some things to think through with oil finishes i have nothing against things with chemical dryers besides the fact that they're chemicals um, and they they i they have their application i have plenty of pieces that go out of here with ca with catalyst uh drying oils on them because they're quick and you need to be able to get the piece delivered and get it into somebody's house quickly um, but my preference would definitely be a pure oil. Um, and we're talking three to five coats over the period of two or three weeks with a wax top coat just as a buff protecting it. So some things to keep in mind when it comes to oil finishes.